Hi, this is Nathan. Welcome to the Wad Fan Chalk Pod. Hello and welcome to the Wad Fam Chalk Pod. I'm Dylan Weaver. And I'm Andrew Sabo. Andrew, let's say it together this time. It's time for another episode of Hot Split, Split episode, episode Summer! summer. Ah! It's like a little, uh, like a, like a balloon when you let out the air and it goes in six cycles. Exactly. Exactly what I'm going for. You could have achieved it by just moving your face in front of the mic, but instead, you made the sound go quieter and then louder with your voice. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's what they call a first draft joke. First draft joke. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this this week we're talking about episode 438A, The Lion Tale. Mm-hmm. Now, you might not have been able to tell it from how I said it, but that's L-Y-I-N apostrophe. Mm-hmm. As in lying, but it's a double entendre because it's a tale about a lion. Mm-hmm. You totally. see, wordplay. So Odyssey's clever. favorite thing to do with episode titles. Is this about a lion tale or is it about a lion tale? It's about both and neither of which are the lion thing which is disappointing to me do you know do you know the uh the um the arthur joke that i think about constantly arthur. which is one of those arthur no. the aardvark he uh at, at one point there's like a dream sequence or something and then someone's like over here on the left we have sandwiches and then over here there are sandwiches and they're just witches made out <laughs> of sand, sand. <laughs> And I think about that. It's 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 a it's a perfect joke. It is. Oh man, that is actually pretty top notch. <laughs> That's an old episode of Ar- Arthur. I'm um, sure it is. Uh, mm. But this this episode, uh, not quite that clever. But we are no. talking about, you know, a lion's tale. Mm-hmm. Um, Written by Charlie Richards. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Wait. Andrew's doing the context. <laughs> uh-huh. What? What is this? And it was originally aired on March eleventh, two thousand. Wow. A week after Dylan's dad made the joke. <laughs> yeah. We can't. We can't keep this alive <laughs> for um, three weeks in a row. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Richards has written uh, five episodes total. We've never talked about one before, but we'll talk about one again. Um. But yeah. I, and then right. Andrew, Andrew, who do you think this episode was directed by? Oh, just, I'm not, I don't want to answer, uh, Lawler? Yep. Okay. Now, I, I realize you're probably looking at the wiki right now, but but if you can avoid looking for a moment. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the percentage for this episode? No. What would you give this episode on a scale of 0 to 100? Stop looking at your no, screen. No, no, I, I can't see it. Okay, I'm, all I'm right. Just look at the title. Uh... What would I give it, or what do I think the club gave it? Give, give, give me both. Give me okay. both. I mean, we're, we're, we're doing would, rankings at the end of the show. I would give it a... Um, I would give it a generous 84, and I think the club gave it a 92. <laughs> the Adventures in Odyssey Wiki, with 11 votes, has this episode listed at a 49%. 49%. <laughs> Holy Moses, why? I have no idea. What? What is the... I cannot figure it out. It's so funny. We have covered so many episodes worse than this. We've covered worse episodes in Split Episodes Summer than this. Yeah. Are you but, kidding me? This one at least made sense. But not to the listeners. Wow, I really overshot it. <laughs> Because usually that's the way it goes, is we're like, oh, yeah, we'd give it, like, you know, a decent score, and they're, like, 100%. Yeah, yeah, 94, 93, whatever. No, 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 no. They don't like Aubrey lying about the mountain lion. Yep. Um, 
So speaking of which, this episode begins like all of our favorite split episodes do with Aubrey journaling. I mean, truly, it's I, I, I just wrote down like this, like, yay. Yeah, it's another Aubrey episode. She's journaling again. Mm-hmm. It's it's my favorite. No, and it's very I don't think that I realized it until this covering. I, I think this style is very emblematic of the era of the show. And kind of how they're uh, portraying the kids' perspectives. They do a lot of journal entries. I mean, this is around the time of life in the third person and all of that. Yeah, life um, in the third person's, you know, maybe five years later. A little yeah. Bit more, but. Well, I guess maybe a little bit further. Yeah. But, but there's just a lot of it. Uh, and I, I appreciate, I really appreciate this format. And for a split episode, I think that it's perfect because it's. It makes sense, and it's short and digestible, and you can get a beginning and an end and have it make sense. Yeah, yeah, it it's, it's it flows well. It it references stuff external to it, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but but yeah, so it starts out with Aubrey taking out the trash. She's having an argument with her mother about taking out the trash, and super heavy. She doesn't want to take it all the way to the back. Uh, yep. Mom says, "Don't just leave it by the gate." which yep totally she's a like, thing. yeah and then and she's like do you want to just like her mom's like do you want to just let it pile up until you know we're in a, like knee deep in it and she's like is that an option and her mom says no and she says rats and her mom says that's what we're trying, trying to, to avoid, avoid. <laughs> which is funny um it hits yeah um so and she's taking out the garbage it's and- very heavy she wonders if it's her mom's lead collection she has hmm <laughs> <laughs> I love I love the uh, the essential oil bomb to lead collection mom <laughs> pipeline, pipeline. Uh-huh. lead pipeline lead <laughs> precisely oh the man lead just gets more and more uh, concentrated <laughs> the farther along your pipe you go yeah and so there's some kids playing around back there mm-hmm. um, at the Timothy Center and she's like hey you guys aren't supposed to be back here mm-hmm. and then like goes a little bit harder to sell and is like you know there's scary monsters back here and mm-hmm. like stay stay away so that you don't get hurt mm-hmm. um, and so the kids scram and then she opens up the the trash can the dumpster whatever it is and there is a cat mm-hmm. a kitten in fact and it screams and she cuts herself on mm-hmm. the trash can somehow, and then the kids come back, and she's like, there was a monstrous cat in there. It's a good thing I told you guys to get away, because it just scratched me, and look at how bad this looks. Mm-hmm. And the kids are freaking out. and As uh, they should be. Yeah, and Aubrey, this, at this point, doesn't really... She doesn't upsell it nearly as much as she does later in the episode. She, she kind of skirts around the fact that, you know, she, she says, like, it's a... You know, it's a big cat and it's a monster or whatever. Um, but she's not she's not really going into depth and it's just a small scratch. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, she feels bad about it. It's, you know, it's just a little white lie. This is that's the theme of the episode is, you know, very quintessential boy who cries wolf. I, you know, not that there's an actual wolf in here, but um it's the girl who cries cat. Yes, the girl who cries cat. Because all dogs are boys and all cats are girls. <laughs> exactly. That's why all dogs go to heaven and all cats go to Jupiter, Jupiter. to get more stupider. I like that we reached that conclusion. Did you reach it at the same time? <laughs> I was like, ah, wait, I know where he's going to swerve here. <laughs> A space joke. Um, we should make a podcast. Who knows? Maybe we will someday. Um. So. So. Yeah. Then. Uh. Then Connie. Um. Uh. She. She's going to get, grab her bike, and Connie sees her in her car, and Connie's like, "Oh, hey, you can ride with me." Mm-hmm. Um. And so, she hops into Connie's car, and Connie sees the scratch, and Aubrey starts to explain, but like, does this thing where Connie's like, you know. A cat scared you? A kitten scared you? Well, well, it was a cat. Mm-hmm. You know, and... It was a big cat, actually. Right. Oh, so you got scared by a big cat. Well, it was, a, it was actually it was a massive cat. I didn't say scared. I said scarred. Yeah, scar- Oh, that's what she right. says. That. Yeah. I didn't say scared. I meant to say scarred. I got right. scarred by the cat. Yep. And so it's this, it's this like, she, she feels ashamed that she was like scared by a kitten. Mm-hmm. And it just escalates from there. 
then she gets to wit's end and Eugene is not gonna like mm-hmm. is not just gonna be like, Oh, you're scratched, fine, whatever. He's like, Oh no, what happened? Yeah, which of these Latin names for the big cat family attacked you? Yeah. Um, and all of this stuff, and then he mentions that there was a mountain lion spotted around Trickle Lake, Mm -hmm. and that's where the story really takes a turn. (laughs) Yes. Because then Aubrey... Right, she talks about the fact that it was a giant cat. Yeah, she she fought a mountain lion, essentially. Right, right. Taking out the garbage. And then Alex, like, has overheard it from Connie? Mm Mm-hmm. So, like, he's just heard, like, the minimum story, but is, yeah. like, asking if he can put it on the Witsend website, which mm-hmm. I love that it's back love here. Love the through line there. Yeah. And then, yeah, the more the more she tells the story, the crazier it gets. It just snowballs absolutely out of control as she's then, at a certain point, talking about, like, swinging it around by its tail. Oh, yeah. It goes, like, full, full cartoon. <laughs> Like, yep. Oh, yeah. The incredible line of he bit me, then I, I bit, bit him. him back. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Um, yeah, and, and as she's telling the story, you know, more and more kids are coming around, and you can get that by the Foley work in the background, and like, oh, there's all these kids listening, and, and she's getting more excited and dramatic um, and telling the story. Yep. And, uh, and and she's she writing in her journal away. throughout this, and she's talking about like the like inner turmoil yeah. of like knowing like that she shouldn't be lying, but it like just keeps getting away from her, mm-hmm. and like and it's like the interesting thing once again where it's like Aubrey is not a Christian, mm-hmm. but like even in Odyssey, like yeah, they know not to lie, which also. Fair. I think, like, not lying is pretty universal, but I think it's interesting for the show, for a show that often goes, like, Christian kids make all the right choices and non-Christian kids make all the bad choices. We We have have someone here, like, on their own making a good choice, Mm -hmm. but not through a Christian worldview. And I just always think it's worth underlining when that happens, because I think it does reflect real world. It's just unexpected from the show. From this show that does not (laughs) pride itself on really being in touch with reality. Yeah. Now, Andrew, do you have a lying story from growing up that sticks out in your head? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. So I went on a ski vacation in um, middle sc- or in elementary school. How bougie! Not it was. A I went on a ski vacation. vacation. Yeah, yeah. It was when a- I was in elementary school, <laughs> my aunt or my grandma lived in Maine, and you know she was alone, so we'd go up and spend time with her for extended periods of time, and we would go skiing because she was sweet and would love to do that with us. Um, and I took a nasty fall uh, coming down the mountain. And just as the day went on, what I ran t- into got bigger and bigger. Where oh, I was like, oh, yeah. I, I tripped over a bush. What actually happened was I think my ski slipped off the trail and I just bit it. <laughs> but like, I was like, oh, I ran into a bush. Oh, I like ran into a bush and then caught myself on a tree or oh i ran into a bush then i ran into a tree then i tumbled the way down the mountain so much that it turned into a big giant snowball (laughs) no but i did say that at one point and this is when i really caught myself i was like this is just this isn't even possible i i said that i hit a bush and then ran into a brick wall (laughs) like of a building (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> did you get called out on any of this no <laughs> that's so funny no that was the crazy thing um so like the story very much developed a good bit um while i was in maine and i you know the white lie i think reached its fullest extent um while you know, I was around people that knew enough about skiing to call me on my crap. Uh-huh. <laughs> but then once I got back to public school, the place that I went, um, <laughs> that one Wait, time. what? <laughs> Andrew went to public school? I thought he was homeschooled his whole life. Yeah. Uh, and that was that was when the brick wall came in because <laughs> they, they didn't know and I was exaggerating. It was like, oh, yeah, no, it was crazy, blah, 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 blah. 
I hit this tree and then I hit a brick wall and I was in a lot of pain and that that's the first thing that comes to mind. But no, that's very appropriate. Yeah, I I did. I've done that plenty of times. Um, I also used to do it with basketball games. Uh, I would like when I was in sixth grade, I played basketball and I would just lie about how many points I scored. <laughs> Be like, oh yeah, I had like three layups and I got fouled twice. So I had two free throws. I had one layup and I didn't get fouled. I made zero free throws that game, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <sighs> so what I'm trying to convey is that nothing I say is trustworthy. <laughs> <laughs> and is clearly hyperbolized. Yeah, people don't change. <laughs> no, no, never, not once. Um, what about you, Dylan? Do you have I don't. A, I don't feel like I have. Lie? No, I feel like I don't have that kind of a lie. It's because you're smart. You don't want to put yourself in a situation where you have to back up a ridiculous story. <laughs> I think a lot of my lies feel more like the one Aubrey tells Connie, mm. where it's like I'm very much trying to like play something off as like as m- more um like th- as i know more than mm-hmm. i do find that sort of one a lot like the i mean like the classic like joke of you know of like just making up a band name and running with it and like mm-hmm. getting people to nod along and i'd be one of those people who nod along and are like yeah yeah i've heard some of their stuff or whatever <laughs> yeah. because like i yeah i don't I sometimes, and I'm trying, this is something I'm really actively trying to work on, like, currently, Mm -hmm. but I sometimes feel like I impose the expectations of those, or, like, I I make assumptions about the expectations people have of me or something, Mm -hmm. or, like, I... I want to always seem like I know stuff. Yeah. And so there are things that people will tell me where I'm like, oh, I didn't know that, but I'll play it off as I already did. Mm -hmm. Or people will ask me if I've seen a movie or listened to a band or whatever. And I'll be, and I'll like act as though I have, even though I haven't. I've heard the name of one of their songs. Right. (laughs) Right. Like, oh, I'm not like, I don't know them particularly well, but I'm familiar. Like I've at least heard of them before Mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Or like the, um what's the Mike Birbiglia has has a really good joke, joke in that. this vein just talking about like um uh yeah just saying like I've heard of them or whatever yeah, yeah. um and I feel like that's the kind of lie that I It'd like tell. historically have done the most with but like continue to mm-hmm. and yeah I'm just like yeah I will like not because, not as even like like a conscious like ah oh, this will make me sound better, but just it's like not wanting to admit that I don't know a thing. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, especially for something like music, where you know it's something you care a lot about and you take a lot of pride in at least the amount that you know. So yeah, but like, like I'm trying not to. No, no, exactly. No, for sure. I'm really trying to be better about that because I yeah I don't have some encyclopedic <laughs> uh, encyclopedic knowledge of anything exactly like even even adventures in odyssey i get stuff wrong Mm -hmm. even movies that i care about i get stuff wrong yeah you as the audience have called me on stuff i've gotten wrong about this show and i appreciate it like it's good to have that accountability yeah that that or that just that level of humbling the reminder that it's like no i don't i don't know all when it (laughs) comes to this show as much as my internal you know monologue may want me right to. or as much as i'm like confident about things or like i think there's also that that thing of like when you are speaking into a microphone you always have like a level of authority yeah or it's like <laughs> even something. if i knew nothing like i just because of the fact that i host this show i sound like i know a lot so smart mm-hmm. but but yeah so yeah, I don't. I, I wish I had like a good like snowball story like you though. That's that's very fun. That was a literal snowball. Yeah, no, it was a lot of, a lot of that. I would say for me, I'm trying to get much more intentional about allocating credit adequately mm. and just being like, no, this like this is what I did and this is what other people did and like I want to make sure I'm getting credit for what I did, but like I know in the past like it's very tempting to take a little bit of credit from things that other people did or whatever and how they helped you 
or you know like if i make a dish for um my girlfriend or something like that and i need uh you know some help with some aspect of it whether it's you know a technique thing or getting supplies or questions like you know it could be easy to say like oh yeah i figured that all out but i i did not i i I texted Mm -hmm. a friend who knew more than me and they gave me the answer nice so that's that's something that i definitely try to be pretty honest and intentional about it's just like what did i actually do (laughs) sure sure uh so you if, know what we're running we're, we're running short on time I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna do this and mm-hmm, i'm gonna feel, go for it. feel bad about it and we could we can absolutely cut it but um know that i love you andrew shape of water <laughs> what about shape of water dylan <laughs> how much of shape of water did you watch before you watched it in the barn How much did I actually watch, or how much did I tell you I watched? <laughs> how much did you actually watch, Andrew? Uh, I think ten minutes, fifteen minutes. Okay. How much did you I did? S- you did actually watch some of it, though. Yeah. No, I did. I watched like ten, fifteen <laughs> minutes of it, and I got weirded because I saw her give him the egg the first time, and okay. I got weirded out, and that was when I was like, "Okay, I'm done." <laughs> That was that was the extent of my my water shapes. The first time. Okay, all right. <laughs> I'm about to get called. Please, please oh, well. sh- share share with the Chalk Squad the story of my sins. <laughs> well, so we were just we were talking about it at one point. You were playing it up very much, like you had seen, seen the it, movie. and like you're like, oh, it's so weird and whatever. Mm-hmm. And then, and then at one point, I was. I don't remember why, but I was chatting with Nathan, Mm -hmm. and I brought up the fact where I was like, Andrew keeps acting as though he's seen Shape of Water, and I'm pretty confident he has not. (laughs) And then there was a point at which the three of us were hanging out together, and and you started talking about it again. (laughs) (laughs) And we just locked eyes, and we're like dying, but holding it together. (laughs) Yeah, no, I definitely was talking like I had seen more of it than I had, and I think I did oversell the amount, because I think I said I watched half of it when I really only made it, like, 15, 20 minutes in. Yeah. We were like, we were like, I don't know if he has seen any of it, but he is playing this up as though, well, like, he's seen the whole thing. He's seen the movie. And... Which, if you know anything about me lying, I'm terrible at it, uh-huh. so there was- was it was no just way. it was it was very funny and it happened this summer it's the exact sort of thing that like so oh, many yeah. of my lies yeah. are yeah exactly oh i i listened to that <laughs> band yeah but sure. right but it was just i didn't even realize that was a character flaw until i started recording this podcast with dylan and he would talk like i'd be like oh yeah i've heard of them and be like no you haven't I'm like, yeah i know <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> yeah. oh man but yeah uh, it's a now, homeschool like, reflex of like I have to know everything everybody's talking about, otherwise they're all gonna leave. I mean, I feel that way. I didn't go to homeschool. I didn't go to homeschool. <laughs> um, the big home. It's a big, big home with lots and lots of schools. Oh, but the important thing is now you've seen all of Shape of Water. <laughs> yeah, that is the very. And important. was it as weird as you talked it up as being Andrew? Even weirder. <laughs> even weirder seriously uh yeah yeah i didn't expect the paddington bathroom scene (laughs) with with them filling up the entire bathroom with water what a good movie i would i would definitely be interested in rewatching it i think i enjoyed it more than i thought i would it's way more of a conventional movie than I think anybody gives it credit, credit for. Like, yeah. Like, I feel like it gets talked about as being some, like, you know, crazy, like, art film, really out there, whatever. And I'm like, no, it's like a normal movie, no, except that, normal. like, just, like, one of the characters happens to not be human and it's be a, a love person. interest. Yeah. <laughs> it's a not normal, it's a fish person love story. Yeah. And that anyway. went net. <laughs> no, Perfect that's movie. A weird movie. <laughs> oh man, watch a net chalk squad. Yeah, that's, that's my, that's my plug. Episode. Shape of Water is great, but oh, a watch net. a net. 
Um, anyways, uh, lies. That's what we lies. Were that's about. what we're talking about. Lying. So, Wit confronts right. <laughs> Aubrey about it, and she it cuts but he to does her it, journal. but he does it in his super like Good manipulative night. wit. Like I know all, but I'm not gonna let you on because you need to learn the lesson yourself. But you will only learn the lesson if I force you into learning it. Yep. Yep. It's so great. It's I really so... hate it. Well, like, and it's the classic. I mean, I feel like. It reads so transparently too, yeah. with the whole rabies thing and all yeah. of it. Where it's just not—it's not even believable right, that right. Wit is concerned. Right. <laughs> yes. So, so the situation is that Wit brings up to her that the big cat that she claims to have, you know, fought had, off and yeah. swung around by its tail. Right. By its lion tail. Um, is wait. I don't think mountain lions have tails. I'm looking at Okay, it. you Google that. While you Google that, I'm going to rant. But, Go like, so <laughs> so she's she's talking about the whole, like, Wit, Wit comes to her with this whole thing and is like, I'm going to take you, like, I'm, I, like, I got to take you to the hospital. They caught that mountain lion on the other side of town, um, which is crazy. And she's like, well, it must have run fast. And he's like, well, regardless, the mountain lion had rabies, so we got to take you in to, to, get, to get your rabies shots. And so Wit takes her to the hospital. She doesn't go with her parents. No, no. Wit, Wit, Wit just is, is like, Connie, watch the counter. I'm taking this girl to the hospital. Exactly. And if you know anything about what they do for rabies, which Wit does, um, it involves a giant needle being stabbed in your stomach multiple times over the course of several weeks. I did not know this. Yeah. Not, not fun. Not a good time. But as soon as he mentioned, like... They were talking about rabies and everything, and them going to the hospital. I was like, "Wit knows this is <laughs> this is one because Wit knows, and two because Wit's going along with like stabbing this child in the stomach." Uh, you want me to bleep you? Yeah, I'm really, really losing it. That's what happens when we do a double. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm distracted by the fact that mountain yeah. lions do have long tails, two okay. and a half to three feet. Bobcats, on the other hand, have shorter tails that are between, um, like, seven and nine inches. So still swingable. D- yeah, they definitely both have tails. I thought that wa- I thought either bobcats or mountain lions didn't have tails. One of them didn't. I didn't think bobcats and mountain lions were different things. I It's a Boy Scout thing. That's the only reason I know. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So so regardless, they're now at the they're now at the hospital mm-hmm. and um she's getting she brings out a needle and she's like, Oh, that one's just a nub and then pulls out a bigger needle. Yeah, yeah. So it's like she's in on it? The nurse is in on it? <sighs> well no, so the nurse doesn't Aubrey's like, sitting with wit. Right. Nurse brings out needle, Aubrey freaks out, wit says, Oh, this is just a local anesthetic then nurse brings out the big needle right. and says, this is actually your shot. Right. So but is the nurse prepared to give this girl a rabies shot off of wit say so? Or did wit call her up and be like, we need to scare the <laughs> crap out of this like atheist girl. Can you please prep the needles? I think <laughs> prep the needles, new band name. I call it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, based on the rating of this episode, Wit called ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, then Aubrey, like, confesses to it all, and the nurse is like, wow, you have quite the imagination. To which Aubrey responds, you have big needles, they win. <laughs> Which, Which is, is so good. Oh, it's great. It's a great joke, and yep. it's like a surprising. It's a surprising joke to hear at Odyssey because it feels like a joke I would make. Sure. sure. Yep. <laughs> like it's just the kid jokes. I don't know. Yep. No, it's it's, it's great. Joke lands well, and then Wit's basically like, you know, you, you, your sin will always find you out. Well, no, yeah. So she she's freaking out, and then she confessed. Fine, I got scared by a kitten, and I fell in the bush. And and then Wit doesn't say anything. He just says, be sure your sin will find you out. And then Aubrey's like, what? And then he goes, 
well, there's a verse in blah, 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 blah about this. And be sure you, that your sin will find you out. Yep. Everybody knew that you were lying. Right. I knew you were lying. Your parents knew you were lying. Yep. And then, right, she gets back to its end. And Alex still wants to write the paper um, because wants to write the story. Um, and he and they all enjoy her kitten story just as much. It's just yeah. she's the butt of the joke rather than the hero. Yeah. Well, and they give the bit like, oh, the truth is stranger than fiction. Yep. And um, and, you know, she kind of mentions the fact that she really likes the attention of it and everything well actually she mentions that earlier in the episode that she really liked the attention of it so kind of having that tied up and that like oh these people still care about her is nice yeah at the end yep but that's the end of the episode yeah <laughs> it's so it's so short and breezy yeah i don't really think that is. there's yeah i mean i i the thing is i can't figure out what about this episode the wiki people didn't like I have my problems with wit in this episode, mm-hmm. but I don't expect that to be the issue because there would be so many low-rated episodes if that were the case. Yeah, exactly. Because it just it just feels like a normal episode, more or less. The mm-hmm. story's fun. The characters like it's like a nice mismatch of characters. The the performances are decent. It is. It feels like. It feels like the shortest one of these episodes. Like it it's does. truly just like point to point to point. Very like quick and done. It's mostly just her like retelling this story in different detail, exactly, and then it ends. And that's uh, and that's the thing that I think makes it so breezy is that it all, is all about the one central event and how she's you know talking to people about it after the fact, and then it ends with them actually finding out the truth of what happened. Yeah. Um. So yeah. No. It. It exists. I, I'm not going to lie. I don't think it's going to be particularly high in my rankings. No, no. But, um, but I don't think it's. I don't think it's bad. I think it's. I, I yeah. don't understand the 49. percent Yes, I think it's very funny. I wonder if like it was originally rated a lot higher, and then like a couple people really didn't like it, and so they went back and changed their scores, and that threw uh, off the average. Who knows? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's only a it's only a sample size of 11. Exactly. So. <laughs> <sighs> anything anything could be the case oh yeah. uh, fun fact this is connie's 200th episode on the show which wow. i'm surprised that does not score it more points on the wiki's rating i'm surprised that it's only her 200th episode yeah i mean it's she's got to be in i wonder if she's in a higher percentage after this than before this i think so because you got to think in the beginning of the show she was more tangential as opposed to a core character yeah i kind of i mean like connie comes to town is like very early on very like, the early whole, it was like what, episode three like yeah. the whole idea of like katie lee is part of like the key cast true in the true. show from like the get-go it's her will ryan hal smith and um walker edmondson yeah and that's it. But anyways, <sighs> good good for Connie though. Good for Connie. Um could use some Walker Edmonston. Could use some good guy Tom in this yeah. episode. Yeah. Someone's gotta keep wit in check as And he me, apparently threatens my... girls with needles. My language is all over the place. <laughs> if that made it in, you might have heard some bleeps, folks. Bleep! We do, we do, we we do bleebs, my man. Bleebs. <laughs> we do bleebs, my man. <laughs> yeah we do, we do bleep people other than guests i mean we've we've long we've long held this uh held this this tenant but yeah. uh, don't don't often have to break it out so you know wonderful it happens what <laughs> bleeps my man <laughs> oh man all right um andrew uh any any final notes Oh no, no! I think I'm I'm just about noted out. <laughs> okay, then how about how about plugs? Plugs for this? Um, well, I can't plug Pokemon Go again. Fishing. I went fishing the this summer for the first time. That was really nice, good and relaxing. I think uh, you have plugged I, fishing already. I have I plugged it this summer. I, it, yeah, but go for it. Okay, cool. Plugging fishing once again. It was a good time. Uh, bodies of water. It's sitting with optional murder. Definitely, definitely a fan. Yeah, dude, just go out to Trickle Lake, do some ice fishing with yeah with Tom and Eugene. And oh, that and, that sounds delightful. Yeah, 
Boy, I can't wait till I graduate college so I can use my winter months for things like ice fishing. <laughs> oh man, my uh, my plug for this episode is another podcast guest. Okay. Um, yeah, so so there's a really good podcast I've been liking called Normal Gossip, um, in which a uh, anonymously a like gossip story is submitted, um, mm. and then the story is then um, uh, like altered to anonymize it. And then, like, the host, Kelsey McKinney, reads it to a guest mm. um, and, like, walks them through the whole the whole thing. Um, and it's, it's so entertaining. It's really good. But the reason it jumped out to me for this episode in particular is they, one of their more recent episodes, they did over the course of, like, spread out over, I think, eight different people. Mm-hmm. They did a game of telephone. Oh. So they had like a little snippet of gossip yeah. that they told to someone, recorded what that person, then that person retold it and they recorded that. And then they played that for the next person the whole way down the line until it had become like a nearly entirely different story. That's so cool. And it is a wild ride. It's so funny. And I think like it does a good job of like, stories getting out of hand yeah now granted it's not one person telling the same like the, it's not someone exaggerating a story but it's a similar idea um mm. to what this episode's playing with and it just uh yeah i was thinking about it listening to this um and so yeah i'm gonna give that a plug oh here. actually i do have a good plug a uh, podcast um and this is something dylan hasn't heard of yet so i'm excited to break the news to him on I'm, air i'm but... gonna lie and say i already heard of it guys yeah <laughs> it is um it's a podcast called campfire crime uh i've been getting into true crime just a little bit um but it's a nice podcast they have like i think i think they have upload weekly maybe it's uh two times a week um but they're like 45 minute little campfire uh like true crime stories okay. and it's these two female friends um and they have like the campfire foley work in the background the whole time sure, and they sure. talk real quietly that. and and sometimes they make jokes and they're both really funny uh but it's been my new Odyssey replacement as far as like narrative stuff I like to listen to before bed, because uh, gotcha. I can't I can't listen to like normal podcasts like Good Christian <laughs> Fun or something like that or even like intelligent ones about stuff I care about. Like it's got to be something vague and self contained that I can fall asleep during the middle of and not feel bad about. Nice. So highly recommend uh, Campfire Crime. A much more successful podcast than ours but um nice happy to throw y'all their way if you are interested in such things all right i'll uh, i'll link it in the show notes all right so here's the situation folks we're gonna be back in a week with an episode so the b side to this episode is two roads which is an episode that we've already covered Mm -hmm. so we will not be doing that next week yes the However, that was a replacement B-side. The original B-side is an episode called The Telltale Cat, which no longer airs. Is it on the club? It is not on the club. So here's the situation. If I can track down a copy of The Telltale Cat, that is what we will be covering next week. Okay. If I cannot, we will be back with What Do You Think? So (laughs) that's not a question. That's the actual name of the episode. (laughs) And that actual name of the episode has a question mark in it. So we will either be back with the telltale cat or what do you think? If you want the full continuity, you can go back and listen to our old episode on the two roads. Mm -hmm. um, The only other split episode that we covered before hot split episode summer. Um, (laughs) But, but yeah, so that's, that's the weird situation we're in. Additionally, if, if this if this episode comes out and you have access to the Telltale Cat, please and can send it to us, then even if we can't get the episode recorded in time to do it in order, we will just tack it on randomly because it's split episode summer and there's no continuity anyways. Exactly. 
and we will shout you out, and I will send you an article of clothing, perhaps. I don't know, what, what, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I can, can pretend to like a band you've seen. <laughs> I could send you a sticker. Oh, yeah. yeah. We could arrange that. Oh, totally. All right. And with all that being said, we'll be back next week with an episode. Bye, guys. Bye. Wadfam Chalk Pod is a presentation of the Lidditz Podcast Co-op. This show is a fan podcast and has no official affiliation with Adventures in Odyssey or Focus on the Family. As such, the copyright is ours under Creative Commons. Follow the podcast at Wadfam Chalk Pod on Twitter and Instagram, or email us at wadfamchalkpod at gmail.com. The Lion Tale was hosted by Dylan Weaver and Andrew Acebo, and edited by Dylan Weaver. And I'm Nathan Haverstick, hoping you'll join us again next time for more of the Wad Fam Chalk Pod.